anyone up for Monty Mole ripoff? It's Chinny Vision. A few weeks back, I saw a new copy of Chubby Gristle for the MSX on eBay. And I thought, that name rings a bell. Someone said something to me about that game. I think it might be quite good. So I ordered up a copy, and here we are loading it on my hit bit. I'm going to be interested to see what the game's all about. I've read the instructions. They're a little bit vague. They refer to the character of Chubby Gristle as having to eat as much food as he can. So, like Pac-Man or something? I don't know. The game was sold by Grand Slam, full price game, and it was programmed by Tech. Apparently, the character of Chubby Gristle was based on a particularly officious car park attendant at the car park where Tech, the software developers, were based. Animated characters here on the menu screen, spelling out the name Chubby Gristle. This game came out in 1988, and the only reason I'm starting with the MSX version is because I'm loading this off my tape that I bought on eBay, so and I'm pretty sure this would have been a Spectrum game to start with. And there was quite a lot of advertising for this game when it came out as well. And off we go, and that's Chubby Gristle there going up the moving around and oh and I've died already so it appears you, you can push cars around that must be an escalator oh no I've died again is that a baddie running around there no, is that, no she can't kill me I'm putting this car I don't know why I'm putting this car the instructions are a little bit vague they say collect the objects but they don't really say anything beyond as eat, eat as much food as you can there are puzzles to solve I guess but I don't know any more than that, there's not much in the instructions. It's gone up here, and there's a... Chubby Gristle is, well, chubby, and he... he... Oh, did I died again. And again. Uh, why? Hang on. If you die there, you respawn on the screen below. That's interesting. Look at the MSX version. It does appear to be using hardware sprites. There's no colour clash at all when things pass over each other. So rather than looking like a, perhaps what could be a specky port, there appears to be some custom sprite code in here. So we're moving over to the Spectrum. Same menu screen as we saw before. Joystick options, select Sinclair. Now this just take its time. Right, OK. So it's looking very similar to the MSX version. A little bit slower, actually, because, of course, the Spectrum won't have the hardware sprites. So, for once, the MSX appears to have the upper hand. Move the game on here. There's various screens to explore. It's not apparent, really, what you should be doing, as I said. It feels laborious. It feels... Well, it is. It. It's a Monty Mole ripoff, or Technician Ted, or any one of many other platform games from previous years. This is 1988, and here's the killer fact: if you were thinking this was a budget game, you're wrong. This was a full price release. So, at a time where you probably could have bought any number of Monty Mole games on budget, or Jet Set Willy, or Technician Ted. Or even those, some of those games like Technician Ted, I'm not sure. I know Amstrad Action gave away Technician Ted on the cover tape in the early 90s. But this is extremely old hat. It feels like a game from 1985. I know I, I, I've often said that some of the Monty Mole games also feel old. But the difference in the Monty Mole games is they're incredibly polished and play well. So although the concept is old of a platform and ladders game, you forgive it because the game is simply so good. And one of the things about the Monty Mole games, of course, is the fantastic tunes. This has a tune. It loops round and round and round and very, very quickly gets on your nerves. Going over to the C64, going with 
an infinite lives cheat on this version just so we can see a little bit more of the game. Sid version of the same tune that's already been getting on my nerves. A bit more return of speed here again on the C64. I've fallen off again. This game's so fiddly. And I, no matter how much you play, it never gets better. I've, I've watched someone do a playthrough on YouTube on this, and he, he's had to use an infinite lives poke or trainer, I'm not sure which, to get through the game, and he keeps on dying for silly reasons, not his fault. The game is just so incredibly harsh. And the worst thing is, there's no real incentive to to go on. You just keep on thinking, oh, I've just I've seen this all before. I've seen it done so much better. Why am I playing this? And if you'd paid your $9.95 for this or $8.95, oh dear. It's just rotten. It really is. It's just we've stolen a load of ideas from other games and stuck them in this to get one over on the traffic warden outside our office. And then we've stuck it out at full price. And some people will say, well, there's interesting screens in the game. I've seen the playthrough and I can't get through. And I haven't got the will to get through all of the screens on the game. But there's a supermarket screen, a pub screen. And you might say, oh, that's, that's novel. Roland in Time was doing a supermarket screen in 1984. This is four years later, which in 8-bit terms is, is Aeons. There's absolutely nothing here. But it gets worse, because there are ST and Amiga versions of the game, and they cost, wait for it, 1995. £20 pounds for this game, so let, let's see if they've improved it on the ST. So here we are on the ST with the same music as the MSX, and I suspect when we come to see the Amstrad version, it's going to be the same music as well on the Amstrad version. It's probably going to be a port from the Spectrum. Here we are on the ST with our 1995 game, and oh my goodness. This is quite unbelievable. I, I'm lost for words. They've... it's... I've played PD games like this. Better than this. Much better than this. I know it's 1988, but you could be playing games like Rana Rama on your ST, and all sorts of other games. And you got this absolute rubbish. Imagine you've just moved over from a Spectrum Commodore 64 and Amstrad to the ST and thinking, right, I want some of this cutting edge 16 bit gaming. I'm going to pay $19.95 for this Chubby Gristle game that I've seen in the software shop. And then getting it home and seeing that basically it's absolutely identical to an 8 bit game. There's, there's nothing new here at all. In fact, it's all incredibly old hat and you forked out twice the price of an 8-bit game to play this tat. I'm not going to show the Amiga version. It's every bit as bad as this. I'm losing the will to live. Over to the Amstrad, and I... Oh, we'll get this over and done with quickly. It's going to be a specky port, I'm guessing, and... Same menu screen, but moving arthritically. I'm going to hate this music. Every time I get reminded of the people responsible for this rubbish, when it flashes past me. Oh! Now there's a surprise. I was fully in expectation of a specky port here on the Amstrad. But no, we've got Mode Nought 16 colour graphics on the Amstrad. Very crude 16 colour low resolution graphics. They look like an Amsoft game from 1984. In fact, I mentioned Roland in Time and Roland in Space earlier on, and they look very similar to this. It's exceedingly crude, but at least it's colourful. It's just as bad as the other versions, unfortunately. This is a game where, in all honesty, gameplay-wise, there is no difference at all between any of the five versions we've seen. And I've had a quick go on the Amiga version. Um, it's the same, but I'm not going to show it. There's, there's nothing here. Oh, it's so fiddly. The game's 
fiddly, it's annoying, it's unoriginal. Oh. It's also not a particularly nice portrayal of people with weight problems, it has to be said. It's a little bit cruel. It's, I know it's supposed to be cartoonish, but I don't think you get away with it these days. What are you supposed to be doing with these cars that you move around? You push them around, then they break in half and you pull them back. The instructions are so poor that it's not clear. There is a split mode thing going here on the Amstrad screen. You've got the scoreboard at the bottom, which I haven't mentioned so far. And you get a different title for each screen. Usually trying to be funny. And the tons meter down there, which indicates how much food you've got to eat. And you've got to fill that up, for the scale all the way up. I've said it before, this is a full price game. And in 1988, you might have paid one ninety nine, or perhaps by then two ninety nine, for a game like this, and you wouldn't have thought it was very good. But for full price and for nearly twenty pounds on the sixteen bits, it's absolutely appalling. I've looked at the five versions here; they're all gameplay-wise extremely similar. The differences are graphics and sound, although that said, the Spectrum the Amstrad and the ST all have the same music. They all play the same as I say. The graphics are slightly different on each version. The Spectrum, the Commodore 64 and the MSX are all roughly on par with each other. The Amstrad version is at a lower resolution, but it has more colours. The ST version is at a higher resolution, has the same amount of colours as the Amstrad version 16. And that's about it really. In terms of gameplay, it's completely bland and not a lot there. And it's an incredibly old hat game for 1988. Especially when you can go and buy one of the Monty Mole games, which are vastly, vastly superior. Chubby Gristle is a poor Monty Mole ripoff and a crudely put together one at that. A game best avoided.